think a lot of people are naturally attracted to a flame. Anywhere you go, if there's a bonfire, there's always a lot of people standing around it, and they're just kind of, you know, spacing out, staring into a flame, right? I kind of had that same attraction the first time I seen it. I, was a, I always appreciated, you know, the process of it. You know, you're taking a solid and you're melting it and reshaping it and using fire to do that. It, it was something that, that definitely I was intrigued in. It started out as a hobby. It really uh, showed itself to, to be a good career opportunity when uh, I realized, uh, you know, the wide market there was uh, as far as things to create and sell. So uh, it, it you know, I thought if I enjoy doing this just to do it and I can make money from it, why not, right? The difference between the glass uh, scene here in Canada, or in, in uh, Eugene compared to Canada, is uh, the amount of glass blowers. We're in what's considered the glass blowing mecca of the world. So, uh, you know, it, it'd be like 5,000 glass blowers opposed to the four in, in the state of Alberta where I was. There's no market as far as the people to sell to. There's no supplies so that we need. That. It's a lot harder to get by the glass blower there for sure. Kind of like with everything, as long as you surround yourself with people that are better than you, whatever it is you're doing, you're more apt to become a better, or in my case, a glass blower. Being here in Eugene, uh, like I said, there's over 5,000 glass blowers, and I, I have a handful that I can choose to go hang out with and, and uh, you know, learn on the regular. You know, it's not just hanging out, you're actually acquiring knowledge and, and the little tricks and tips of the trade. It's definitely something that has been out of the public's eye for a long time. It's been around for over 5,000 years. It's longer than carpentry and a lot of the trades that are utilized today on a day-to-day -day basis. It really didn't get utilized for things other than jewelry and, and aesthetic stuff, right? They did a lot of oil lamps and stuff back in the day. Pretty much anything you can think of, I can try. And, uh, you know, the, the more, the the more different it is, uh, the more I'm going to want to try it, just to see if it can be done um, and uh, how you'd go about to do it. I can do production all day long and make 60 bucks an hour, but you know, I feel like a zombie doing the same thing over and over and over again. And then I can put a week into one project and only make 200 bucks from it. You know, it, it really varies, I would say. It looks easy, especially when you watch somebody who's done it for a long time and, you know, like anything, it, you know, they make it look way easier than it really is. Well, you can acquire that information mentally, but physically getting in there and actually doing it is the hard part. So it's a lot of trial and error. So you do, you do need somebody to show you how, but then you also need to put in the time and the torch time, you know, and, and really get in there and burn for a while. My favorite aspect of glass blowing is appreciating the final product.